merit and demerit. Whatever we set out to accomplish in life, we must examine our personal condition as well as the condition of our merit, the spiritual capital that we have built. We should attempt things that are within our current ability and we will accomplish. Don't exceed your limit. If you desire greatness, achieve your greatness through merit, not through unwholesome actions or defilements. Achievements of greatness through the power of merit are genuine achievements, but greatness achieved through defilements will eventually collapse. Look at Devadatta as an example. He achieved only a tiny success but became disillusioned with himself and wanted to be famous. He did so without looking at whether he had built up enough foundation of goodness to deserve it. This resulted in his demise. It is like building a house on a flimsy foundation. If you build the house bigger than the foundation can support, the result is predictable. The house will collapse. If you wonder how I have accomplished all that I have, I will tell you that it is due to the great amount of merits I have accumulated and is also due to my insurmountable patience. The reason I became famous with so many followers is due to the virtues that I have made and built up in the past. One drop at a time fills up a jar. Together, each tiny drop of water can fill up a big jar. Likewise, each act of good deed will fill up your jar of virtue. But with no good deed done at all, your jar of virtue is empty. Never be lazy or preoccupied with what others are doing. In the end, your fate will be determined by no one else but yourself. So fight as hard as you can. The more merit you make, the more you gain, and the less you make, the less you receive. Take every new day as a new opportunity to make merit. With merit, you will succeed in everything. My biggest fear in life is that I will not make enough merit. With great merit behind you, anything you wish can be attained, and all you touch will become successful. No one can obstruct you if you have enough merit to support you. Having a good base of merit is a great blessing indeed. Born to Pursue Perfections I don't wish to be in heaven for too long. I prefer to be reborn into the human realm quickly so I can continue to pursue perfections. Fruit of Merit Merit from our past lives, whether large or small, will bear fruit in the present life and will express itself in full. If you made 10 units of merit in the past, you will receive all the 10 units in the present. If you made 100 units, you will also receive all of the 100 units. The merit made in this present lifetime will yield results only 10 to 20% now, but it will fully bear fruits in the future. Our future lifetime will be wonderful with the merit we made in the present. Thus, we should learn to be content. If we have 100 units of merit, but we spend 1,000, we will collapse in due time. On the contrary, if we have 1,000 units of merit and we spend only 100, the merit will bear more fruits soon. Once you earn more, keep your heart humble and calm. Don't expect more than what you have earned. Only those with a pure heart will be with me. A person of a pure heart and a clear mind, one whose focus is on gaining merit, is the only kind of person I want to have in my company. Those with defiled minds are like oil to my body. We repel each other. Recalling merit. If you think that being in my company will somehow bring you merit, you are mistaken. Only those who actively build merit, who can recall their own merit, will gain it. Merit is your only refuge. Building merit all the way to victory. As you walk more and more along a virtuous path, 
you will develop the ability to recognize other people who share the same path with you. Moreover, you will be able to distinguish those who walk a less virtuous path because they are in a realm that is less pure. If you have not achieved that enlightened state of mind in this lifetime, even though you have given your best, do not give up. Look for your victory in the next life. Keep building more and more merit than before. Continue to improve yourself. Strengthen the purity of your mind, your body, and your speech. Eventually, victory will become yours. More determination, more merit. Support one another in achieving merit. While you are still young, use that youthful energy to support the work of Buddhism. Make a wish for your good work to bring you good merit. The more determination in your heart, the more merit you will gain. The less determination, the less merit. In my next lifetime, I will have the ability to look at a person and be able to recall his past existence. I know his name in that existence and where he came from. I am too occupied to do it in this lifetime, as I still have to deal with defilements. In my next lifetime, however, it will be second nature to me. I will have an enhanced ability to see through everything. When my time comes to be reborn as a human, I will invite all of you to come with me again to continue pursuing virtues. Wherever I go, whether to heaven or Nibbana, or to the reborn again in this earthly realm in order to build more virtues, I will invite you to come with me. Don't give up. You can give up on anything, but never give up on building merit. What you do, you get. Those of you who take residence at the temple have given up your worldly attachments for the opportunity to be here. Since you have already given up so much, you should make your sacrifice worthwhile by dedicating yourselves fully to doing good deeds. Chores and tasks are everyone's responsibilities. We should help one another. Never ignore your duty or put it off for others to do. The task you perform is the merit you gain, not anyone else's. The task others perform is the merit they gain, not anyone else's either. You will take this merit with you to your future existence. Everything you do in this temple, you do for Buddhism. The work done in the temple belongs to the Lord Buddha. Every chore here, light or heavy, brings you merit. So if there is work to do, help each other finish it so you can find more free time to practice meditation, to read, or to broaden your knowledge so that you can become an educated person and be able to relate with others intellectually. Give your utmost in doing good deeds. You come to the temple because you have one thing in mind, to build virtues and to gain merit, creating benefits for yourself. You have already committed the time and effort to be at the temple, so while you are here, you should reap the maximum benefits. Give your utmost in doing good deeds. Call upon merit for help. All good work takes good planning. When I built the Buddha Chak Center, I had to plan everything very carefully. I knew building an almshouse refectory at the Buddha Chuck Center was possible by example of the most venerable Luang Pa Wat Pak Nam, who had built a large almshouse capable of feeding many monks at his temple. His accomplishment brought him a lot of joy and a lot of merit. Even after his death, it still continues to give him plenty of merit. I resolved that when I built a temple, I too would create a similar almshouse, and to my joy, I was able to do so. I was not the only one who had attempted to build such an almshouse. Others, like Kung Yai Tung Suk, who was an excellent teacher and was more proficient in giving sermons than even many educated monks, tried to establish one, but she found it too difficult. When I set about my task, I thought of my merits. 
When I meditated, I called upon my merits to come help me, and I finally succeeded through the support of my merits. Every success in life is the result of the merits we possess. One who possesses greater merits will rule over one who possesses less. Everything relies on merit, so we should set about making more and more of it as we possibly can. I think about my merits and how it governs my life, and without it, I could not be happy. Everything around me is complete because I reflect on my merits, and when I meditate, I reach out for good resources and good people to come help me complete the mission. When you meditate, you too should reflect on your merits. Come reap your merit. Invite your friends to come and reap merit at the temple. I feel pity for them, fearing that they may find themselves erroneously treading into an unhappy realm. Persuade them to perform merit so they will have the opportunity to rise to heaven or nibbana. Succeed through merit. Whatever you set out to accomplish, keep your merits in mind. If you possess merit, merit will help you succeed in the things that you do. Merit is your refuge. Center your mind in it, and everything will fall in place. Merit sphere. Reap as much merit as you can. If you fail to do so, in the next life when we meet again, I will recall who did not want to make merit when given the opportunity, and now he ends up having very little of it to help him keep up with others. At the moment, you may fail to realize that your current benefits are resulting from your previously accumulated merits. Transcendental matters cannot be seen by earthly eyes, but once you leave this world, you will be able to see the size of your merit sphere. The more merit accumulated, the larger the size of your merit sphere. In the front row. Make merit now, even if you are in the back row when doing so. In the next life, your merit will bring you to the front row. It's up to you. Where do you want to be? Do you want to be in the front or in the back? Make merit and use merit in the right way. In order to establish the Buddha Chuck Center, I had to fight all the time. Initially, it was with the boat thieves. Even now, there is always something to resolve. But through it all, I kept my heart pure by thinking of the merits I have made in the past, the merit I am making in the present, and the merits I plan to make in the future. It gives me the strength to fight for my goals. This is using my merit wisely. In the entire world, no one can help me but me. How do I help myself? By creating virtue and eliminating evil within me. Accumulate merit. Each time you come to the temple, you gain a little more merit. It's like putting money in your piggy bank. If you do not come, you will not gain. Purified Mind As I converse with various people, I keep my mind always in its purified state, always centered in merit and in Dhamma. No greed, anger, nor delusions are allowed to defile me. In the purified state, I can see through to the heart of a person's suffering and its causes. With compassion, I offer them insight into their suffering, and in doing so, I gain merit. What they do with that knowledge is now up to them. Their comma is no one else's but their own. Even in illness. Even when ill, I stay committed to making merit. I never stop. Once while I was ill, I meditated and saw the Dhammakaya within me to be incredibly clear and bright. I beheld him for a long time, and when I opened my eyes, even the midday sunlight looked dark to me. The practice of meditation is the most important thing. Remember this and meditate as much as you can. Stay in merit. When I find myself confronted with a serious situation, 
I keep my mind concentrated on Dhamma, concentrated in the virtue and in the merit that I have accumulated in my past lives to help me overcome my troubles. With merit, all obstacles can be conquered. No matter what happens, I am never frightened or nervous because I trust that my merit will help me. For instance, when the temple kitchen lacked supplies, I would center my mind in merit and reach out for my spiritual treasure to fulfill my need. The word lack should not be in your vocabulary as long as you have merit to help. If I ever complain, it is to remind people when things needs to get done, but my mind always remain firmly in merit. Merit Power Everything is determined by merit power. If we had nothing else but merit to our name, we would still achieve success. In this life, my mind is fixed on the quest for virtue and merit. The one thing which concerns me is that my merit will be less than other people's. This is the reason why I am so focused. I do not want to be the one to get left behind. I want to be in the forefront of virtue building. Using Merit Correctly The act of charity returns to us in good fortune. The act of mental cultivation brings us deliverance. Meditate frequently. Before merit can be generated, there is a great deal of effort involved. Merit making can be complete only when the following elements are present. Faith, a good field of merit, an act of good deed, and the right combination of everything else. Since merit is not so easy to come by, do not waste an opportunity to acquire it. Preserve your merit and know how to use your merit the right way. Merit is your vehicle to success and happiness. Let merit be your refuge. Merit is my refuge. I love merit above all else because it is the one thing that can save me. Human beings still carry defilements. Sometimes a person can be good, and sometimes he can be bad. But merit is the one thing I can always rely on for goodness. Don't neglect merit making. It is difficult to be born as a human being. Now that you are born a human being, do not waste your opportunity to make merit. If you have a little, then donate a little. If you have a lot, then donate more. Make a donation according to your ability, but don't allow yourself to get into trouble for overdoing it. Whatever your financial situation is, don't neglect the act of charity. For me, I perform merits regardless of what happens. I may be illiterate, yet I managed to build this temple, and I was able to preside at a major katina ceremony. The merit I have accumulated has allowed me to do extraordinary things that are beyond an ordinary person's ability. But with as much merit as I have already made, I still want to do more. I want to participate in the katina ceremonies and all other meritorious activities. I want to acquire all forms of merit, mundane and transcendental. Acquire both mundane and transcendental merits. Addressing someone who wanted only to meditate and not participate in any mundane chores. I acquire all forms of merit, mundane and transcendental. Mundane merit helps me in self-development, while transcendental merit gives me the ability to teach myself. But once we attain the Dhammakaya, reaching a clear seeing state, we will have the wisdom to accomplish our mundane tasks more easily. Reap what you sow. We cannot escape the consequences of our actions. We can escape neither the effect of our merit, good karma, nor our demerit, bad comma. Both our merit and demerit are embedded to the center of our body. It is the comma that stays with us. There is no way to rid ourselves of it. We reap what we sow. When we do good deeds, these good deeds turn into merits. 
which brings success and happiness to our lives. Carrying Merit and Demerit Whatever action, comma, we commit, we carry the result of that action with us, good or bad. If our action is good, we carry merit. If our action is bad, we carry demerit. You alone carry the burden you create for yourself. If others speak or act unkindly towards you, don't get angry and retaliate back. Forgive them and put an end to the cycle of hostility between you now. Take the long-term view. I am someone who takes the long-term view, seeing beyond this life. Nothing can be taken with us after death except our merit and demerit. Accumulate as much merit as you can. Our life does not end here. Never mind what others might say. Ignore them. There's no use for argument. Let them realize the truth when their own death comes. One who attracts. Build up your merit as much as you can. Build a mountain of merit. It doesn't matter what other people do. For us, we just keep on doing good deeds, even if no one finds out about it. One who is virtuous will eventually be noticed and will attract the company of others. Do only good deeds. Build only good karma. End all evils in this lifetime, so only good karma will be ours in future lifetimes. We are still subject to rebirth because of the defilements we carry, but from now on, avoid all bad actions and embrace only good ones, so our rebirth will be a positive one. Taking care of the temple. For those who help clean temple grounds, no matter which level of heaven they ascend to after death, whether it is Jatumaharachika, Tavatimsa, Yama, or Tusita, their celestial abode will be brightly illuminated and their complexion will be more radiant than other heavenly beings. Not many people volunteer to clean the temple and not many celestial beings have this glowing complexion. If you have the energy, you should do it so the merit will be yours. Accumulate merit at every opportunity that comes your way. One with greater merit rules. Those who possess greater merit have influence over those who possess less. People with little merit can hardly take care of themselves. They need to rely on the virtue of those who possess greater merit for support spiritually. With little merit, they are incapable of rising to a heavenly realm on their own. People with greater merit can help them by showing them how to do good deeds and acquire more merit. There are only a few people whose merit power is so great that they are able to help those who have already fallen into an unfortunate realm. Through the power of my merit, I was able to save my deceased father from the hell realm. But before I was in the position to do so, I had to meditate and purify my mind until all my inner transcendental bodies became crystal clear. Achieving this state of purity, I was able to enter the lower world. I even searched out for my deceased farm animals to spread merit to them. Old merit, new merit. I have pity for both the rich and the poor. Rich people are well off because they have old merit from their past lives to support them. However, if they don't produce new merit in their present life, the old merit can be used up. With no new merit to sustain them in subsequent lives, they will be reborn poor and will face much adversity in their future existences. The reason poor people are the way they are is because they have not built up enough old merit. If we don't encourage them to accumulate new merit, then they will be even more unfortunate in the next life. I feel compassion for both types of people. We must invite people we know, both rich and poor, to make merit so that they will have the spiritual wealth to take them to the future existences. To help others, you must have enough merit. 
I feel sorry for people and I want to rescue them. But to be able to save others, you must have enough merit as a foundation. That is why I work so hard to accrue merit for myself at every opportunity. Merit comes to you every day. A person who takes part in building a temple receives great merit because he has provided a facility for others to do good deeds. As long as the temple remains standing and the buildings are in good repair, that person will reap merit from it every day. Wishes come through. I made the following resolution while leading a robe offering ceremony to monks on the occasion of the Maka Puja Day, in which I was the ceremonial leader. Bring your mind to the center of the body and ask that tree sprites, air sprites, earth sprites, celestial beings from the six heavens, Brahmas from the sixteen Brahma spheres, and the four higher Brahma spheres and the beams from throughout the vast universes to acknowledge and rejoice in the merit that I am making in offering this saffron robe. Let everyone share in my merit. Let Luang Pa Dhammachayo, Luang Pa Dadajiwo, and every monk at the temple share in my merit. May everyone receive merit with an open heart, and the more open your heart, the more merit you will receive. Those who fully open their heart to receive this merit will receive it in full. Those whose heart is only partially open will receive it partially, like water spilling away from a container. Merit is never wasted. While inviting people to attend the robe offering ceremony on Maja Puja Day, 1990, I delivered the following address. You can take merit with you. Even if you have only a little to make an offering, do it anyway. Little by little, your merit builds up, like putting coins into a piggy bank. If you are a billionaire, but you never made any merit, then after death, you will become empty-handed. Merit is the only thing you carry with you through the lifetimes. Merit is never a waste. As for your worldly possessions, they no longer belong to you once you leave this world. Someone else will be using them, or they will fall back into the earth. Due to merit. I invite others to perform charitable acts because I love merit. Merit is the virtue that will free me from suffering. I need merit because I know I have to be reborn again, and merit will benefit me in the future. People are born poor because they fail to practice charity in their past lives. By inviting them to practice charitable acts, they will earn merit, and we too will also benefit from their merit. We make merit as a team. Nobody will be left out. And when we are reborn, all of us will come together again as a virtuous community. We will be free from bad people. Surrounding ourselves with virtuous people ensures that we will not get into trouble. Help from Merit A lay person asked if she ran into obstacles and was far away from me, what should she do to get help from me through my power of virtue? I advise her to recall the virtues from the good deeds she has done and the charitable acts she has made, and ask the merits from these acts of good deeds to help her overcome these obstacles. Your merits can help you. If you keep company with immoral people, these people can't help you. Merit will guide us towards kind people who will come to our assistance. Youth is not a factor if you have merit. A lay person asked me for advice on how to handle a situation where he had to supervise an office where many people working under him were older and have worked there longer than he had. I replied that there is no need to worry. It doesn't matter if you have fewer years than they do. It only matters that you have more merit. It is merit, not age, that is a factor. We are the results of our merit. If we have more merit, we become the leader. Merit is the determining factor. Short life, long life. 
A guest asked me to tell her why her husband had died young. I replied that he died early because of his comma. In his past life, he committed numerous acts of killing and cruelty to animals. He had to face his karmic retribution, which caused him to die young. Someone who lives long, such as in my case, is due to abstention from killing or causing suffering to other beings in the past life. But remember, everyone must die sooner or later. There are no exceptions to this rule. Build up merit. A lay person expressed a desire to go on a meditation retreat, but was concerned about her grown son being left alone. When a man and a woman are in love, the world becomes a colorful place filled with sweet beauty. But once a first child is born, every day is a quarrel. If you don't want a heavy burden, then don't have any children. But if you have them, then you must accept full responsibility. You can't desert them. As for me, I have no one with which to concern myself with, except my merit. In each of us, we carry merit and demerit, and we must do all we can to increase the merit. I'm a fighter. I never back down from problems until I find the solution. But when you are asked to help someone, First, take a good look at yourself and determine if you are really capable of helping this person. If his problems are beyond your abilities to solve, then accept that and practice equanimity. You cannot help someone who will not listen. It is up to his own comma. As for ourselves, we have to make the best with what is given to us. Merit and demerit are the only things we can take with us. Addressing the former governor of Si Saket Province, Thailand, when he visited the temple. When you enter the temple, even a dignitary should leave his rank and title outside because these are earthly mantles. They are not things you can take with you when you die. They are merely masks, and once removed, you are no different from anyone else. Nothing in life is significant except merit and demerit. They are the only things which matter.